G'day guys and welcome to my lab and to our eighth installment in our Zero to Zelda series, how to make an ARPG in Godot 4. In our last lesson, lesson seven, we started setting up some of that combat stuff. We were creating signals through hitboxes and all that sort of thing. Um, and we also created a swoop function for our magpie. So our magpie would detect and chase the player when it came within a certain range. And those things are applicable whether you're using a flying um, sprite like the magpie or whether you want one that's on the ground and you want that NPC to be able to chase your player It's just the masks and things you have to play around with um, So that's where we're up to now what we're going to move on to today is trying to um, Get a bit more of that combat stuff all sorted. It is a lot of code That's why I'm breaking these down into shorter bits because I don't want to overload you I want you to be able to understand those parts have a rest on it come back you know, and then have a go at the next thing. So today we're gonna to, um, expand our player script, we're gonna expand our magpie script, we're gonna change a few other settings around, but by the end of it, hopefully we have got something that is a lot closer to the combat that we wanna see in an ARPG. So what have we gotten up to so far? Well, in our first episode, we uh, looked at uh, the tile map and setting up the project. Then we created our player, uh, we created an enemy, we gave animations and movement to both of those. More recently, we set up layers and collisions. And in our very last one, we sort of started on the combat system. So we got that swoop function working and we added a lot of the signals and things that we're gonna need. What are we doing today? Well, in this particular lesson, we're going to be adding more to our combat system and doing some tweaks around our collisions and layers and animations and things like that as well. Why? To make a better game. We want our game to be as engaging um, and interesting as possible for our players. Well, one of the first things you're gonna be doing is setting up your fight animations and you're gonna be doing that off camera basically. That's gonna be one of your must main might things. Um, so you'll need to be able to understand and apply how we did that. You might need to jump back to a previous video to double check. I'll do it very quickly in this one though. Um, and you'll also need to be able to create some functions to sort of clean up our code a bit. By the end of this lesson, you should have an enemy and a player that will attack each other and will print messages to our debug rather than doing actual health and death just yet, but we'll be printing messages to make sure it is all working and then we can just tweak it in the next lesson. So let's get started with some small tweaks to try and improve some of the, uh, the functions that we've been working on and also to fix up some minor things that I've gotten wrong. So the first thing I wanna do is actually to go to our Magpie script um, and our Magpie scene and I want to click on the, the territory area 2D um, and have a look at our collision layers. Now, I said last lesson for some reason that these need to stay on one. What I should have said was that these need to be on two like normal, but we also need to add the mask one because we want to interact with things on the ground. Remember the way we're thinking about it is layer one is the ground, layer two is the air. So things that are on the ground are gonna be layer one, things that are in the air are gonna be layer two. And if we need them to interact with each other, like the player as a ground thing interact with the magpie as an air thing, we add those masks. So the player has mask two and the magpie has mask one. So that's what should have happened there. Um, so that's there now, so we can have uh, those working properly. We'll check our hitbox as well and do the same thing to that. So our magpie should be two and two in the layer and the mask, but our magpie's territory should be two and two with mask one, and our magpie's hitbox should be two and two with mask one. I hope that makes sense. What I wanna do now is actually go through our Magpie code line by line, because we're gonna be making a lot of changes to bring it up to speed. So you're gonna to wanna to have your uh, your Magpie script open and ready to go. Okay, so we're now Magpie script. We're gonna work our way through. The first thing I wanna do, just to tweak it a bit, I wanna actually reduce this uh, new direction interval to three seconds, just uh, to shorten that length, and that way they're gonna fly in a more random pattern. Um, everything else there should be the same. We need our player in range um, variable and things like that. So as we start to move down, we get into our ready function. That should be exactly the same as well. We haven't made any chances to that. But when we get to our physics process function, we're actually gonna make a lot of changes because we're gonna take our all that animation logic out and we're gonna put it into its own function. And then we'll just call that function in various places. What I think I'm going to do, just so we don't get any typos and errors, I'm going to replace everything in my script from the physics process down. So if you've been um, following along, all this stuff at the top should still be exactly the same. But when we get down to this physics process with our random direction um, and some of those other functions, I'm just gonna replace all that in one go and then we'll go through it. Um, just to make sure that we don't 
accidentally put any typos or anything in there. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to take all of that, like I said, and just delete it. Um, and then what I'll do is I'll grab it all from uh, my completed one, paste it in here, and then we can talk it through. So um, where did I say from? From our, our physics process. So we scroll up to our physics process and we're going to start working our way through. So like I said, we have gone and taken all the animations out and put them into their own function. And you can see that this is getting called here. It's getting called here. Um, it'll also get called down here as well. Um, so we've got this update animation function now and we'll get to that in a second but let's just keep looking through our um, physics process function line by line so the first thing we're doing is uh, still with our swoop so we've got um, our variable direction to player equals da -da -da -da. that's pretty much the same our velocity here has changed a little bit so make sure you're paying close attention and then we call this update animation so you need to get that one typed in as well so pretty much the velocity and the update animation are the new parts for that section there keep working your way down and seeing where you've got differences right so otherwise if we're not swooping then we need to do this logic and then we've got another velocity function that we call that doesn't have the swoop in it right one needs swoop one does not because um, we're not doing our swoop speed down here so otherwise do this and then we update our animation again with the last direction so that should make it so our magpie turns and faces the right way uh, our move and slide come down here this is part of that clamping still so if you're going to uh, make any other enemies um, and you're changing their min x and y and all that this all stays the same you're only going to change it up here um, but let's keep way too much let's keep rolling down uh, so past that and then we've got our old position line all that stuff for our um, the way we're facing again now we've got our update animation function. So this is all new, but it's also almost exactly the same as what was in the physics process. We've just sort of taken it out and thrown it in here. So let's read it through. So update animation, and we need it to take a couple of things. We want it to have direction and also whether or not it's swooping. Um, so if the player is in range and swooping, so those are the two variables from up here, right? Player in range and swooping. At the moment, they're both false, but we're saying that if they are both true, um, we want to play our fight animation. So if they're next to each other and they're attacking, we want to play fight um, and we want to update the sprites accordingly. Um, then we return, then we make sure we don't have any flips going on because that might get everything back to front. So we just false those. Then we keep coming down. Now we've got our normal animation stuff. This pretty much hasn't changed. We've just changed where it was. Um, if direction, so that's all basically the same. Then we come down to our pick random direction. That should be the same as well. Um, and now we get into these functions that we only just created at the end of the last lesson. So we, uh, we've got our is body, <laughs> is body in group. So um, when, we, when a body enters our area 2D, we wanna know if it exists in the player group. So if a magpie enters another magpie's area 2D, we want it to ignore it. But if the player enters it, we want it to do something. And what do we want it to do? Well, we want it to set player to equal body and swoop to equal true. So as soon as our player comes into that territory, we want the magpie to swoop it. Um, but if the player then leaves, we set all that back to how it was, pick a new random direction, and then we update the animation to that last direction. And putting this in here should fix that error where if you run out of the magpie zone, it flies backwards towards you still. So the idea here would be that we can get that to flip around. Keeping on going. Um, so that one there is our territory exit. Um, now we've got our hitbox. So on magpie hitbox entered, we're doing the exact same thing here with our player in range and all of that. We're gonna print a message just so we can see that um, in our output, just so we know that it's working. Um, and then also we deal with our animations there too. Keeping on going. And then we have our last one, which is when we exit the hitbox. So again, if it's the player exiting, we wanna set player in range to false. We want to set the or print that message so we know it's working and then um, undo our animations and that's it we're now down to almost 100 lines of code if uh, we count all our blank lines but uh, that's going to be all of our code for our new um, magpie script so i'm just going to go through one more time so you've got time to see it all and you can rewind it and pause and all of that here's that first chunk with all of our variables there is our ready function here is our physics process function I get it all on the screen or oh, not quite let's uh let's zoom it out a slight bit just so we can get a bit more um stuff on the screen so physics process function that's all of it that's the entirety of it so make sure you've got that correctly make sure you're looking at all your spacing and your tabs 
coming on down. Here is our new update animation function. Um, to make sure you get that correct. And then we've got our pick random direction still, and then our um, territory body, etc., and our hitbox. So that's it, that's the whole Magpie script. Let's save that, let's go into our player script now. Now let's have a look at our player script. So I've got it here and I'm gonna do what I did with the enemy script. I'm just gonna paste a whole new script in because um, the last thing I wanna do is waste your time with me going, doing all those typos because apparently I'm a terrible typer. So I'm just gonna, um, oops, I'm just going to select all of it and I'm just gonna replace it. So what we've got now is our brand new player script. Um, it is still very similar to the one we already had, but we've made a few key changes. So, um, a couple of things I want to just have a look at first is we seem to have disconnected these nodes. So let's just reconnect those. There we go. And that one should update as well. Cool. So we've got those signals going through so we can get that information from those area 2Ds, but let's go from the top down. So we're still extending character body 2D, still got a speed of 100, we've still got last direction, animate sprite. This is a new one, enemy in range. So you're gonna to need to add that variable in. Um, just keep it as a variable and, and we set it to false to start with because we're not going to start any of the magpies in range. Um, then we move along. So function ready, animate sprite, add to group player. That's exactly the same as what we already had. It's our physics process function, of course, where most of the, uh, the changes have taken place. So we've still got our getting direction, our velocities and speeds, all that sort of stuff. We're still normalizing. Um, but as we keep scrolling down, so make sure you come back and you pause this and, and get the right info. Um, all of our animations are here, still pretty much exactly the same way. Still gotta make sure we're getting our flips and things correct and our move and slide function. Here's the main new part of code for the player. So on hitbox body, uh, I've done it again, I'm gonna flip these around so that they look more logically correct to me. So we're gonna look at entered before we look at exited. All right, so on hitbox body entered, we want to um, check if it's the enemy group or not. Then we want to um, set enemy in range to true and print getting swooped so that we're seeing that feedback. And then we do basically the opposite again in our hitbox. And that's the main changes that we are making to our player script. So make sure you go back to the right moment, pause it, copy it down. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next video. All right, so hopefully most of that code is sorted now. The main thing we need to do right now is add the fight animation. So we've coded for it, but we haven't made it. So remember, this is something I want you to do during your must main might. I'm going to do it very quickly and then um, see you know, if the game works when we test it. So I'm just going to quickly do that now. Click on my magpie scene, click on my animated sprite 2D, add a new one, rename it to fight. And then we just got to grab our sprites. I'll make it a bit bigger. I think we got that. Yep. And then those, add that and then test it. All right, so let's see if our magpie, when it detects me and attacks me, starts the attack animation. Yes, it does. It's a bit upside down. We need to tweak it a bit, but it attacks. We're seeing uh, messages in our hitbox, uh, sorry, when we're entering and exiting hitboxes and all of that. So I'm pretty sure we could say that all of that has started working, apart from just some small minor tweaks we need to do to the animation. So that is excellent. The must may might has some pretty broad things this time. So what you must get done to keep up is where you need to update the player in Magby code that we've changed. You need to fix those layers and masks that uh, I got wrong in the last lesson. Um, and you also need to set up the fight animation for your magpie. What you may like to do is consider how you would add a ground-based enemy. So we're gonna do that soon, but it's not very different to what we've already done. So have a think about what needs to change and what you would do to make uh, a ground-based enemy rather than a flying one. It's all about the, the layers and masks. Um, and what you might like to do, we well, might want to experiment with different instances of the, um, the magpie. So you can make a few different versions or you can make a few different actual enemies. So it could just be magpie one, two, three, but each would be their own script and scene. And then you can change the, uh, the defined territory that each of them has. And you could have like four or five magpies that each have their own distinct territory. Um, that's something you might like to consider because that'll really deepen your knowledge of how those mechanics are working. So today, hopefully what you got done is where you added the fight animation to your magpie, uh, you tweaked your code to improve the movement and animation, and you also created those debug messages um, so you're seeing those printed um, as the, the fighting takes place. So you know that all the functions we've been working on are, are working correctly. In our next lesson, uh, what I'm hoping to get done is we'll get our health sorted out, including health bars, as well as health variables and things like that. And uh, if we get to it, we'll also sort out death. So a bit of a morbid one, but 
but uh, it'll just be one of the, the finishing touches we need for that combat system. And the quote I would like to leave you with this time is from Albert Camus, and it is, there is nothing more despicable than respect based on fear. I'll see you next time.